Hey, what's up, you guys? Luke, the window cleaner. Hi. And Rihanna here. We're on Window Cleaner Radio as our podcast slash video series we do for window cleaning resource. If you're listening to us, awesome. You found us on Apple iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud. And if you're watching us, then you're on Window Cleaning Resources YouTube channel. Now, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you like the content we're putting out, hit that like button and make sure to comment down below. Let us know what you want us to talk about. We want to hear from you guys. We want to keep doing these videos and we want to know what you guys want to hear. So today we're actually going to talk about storefronts. Um, yeah. So storefront window cleaning. We know a thing or two about it. That's, uh, I'd say, bulk of our business right now. The reason I got into storefronts originally, one, uh, I would say because storefronts take a lot less knowledge per se and skill to get into storefronts. I think that's one thing that kind of gravi gravitates guys towards storefronts originally. And two, it takes a lot less uh, marketing dollars. It takes a lot less tools all around. It's a cheaper uh, route to get into. And it has that residual income that I think is appealing to a lot of new guys. You're quitting your job, you're starting a new business. So everyone's kind of worried about the uh, phone ringing and you would prefer to have that residual income. My first storefront job was a baseball card shop. It was to be cleaned once a month for $5 inside and out. It was like 10, 15 panes of glass. And I also, I thought I was an awesome salesman. I threw in all of the display cases too. I was like, I'll do those for free. <laughs> what do you think about that? And they were like, I love this guy. And I was like, I know. Clear choice window cleaning, baby. <laughs> Such an original name. Thank you. <laughs> you should have seen the logo. It's all pixelated. Oh, so awful. So, like the the when you're starting off, so you, to sell a storefront, it's it's the first step's really easy. You go in, you talk to somebody. So you go into. We're just going to use McDonald's because McDonald's doesn't use a window cleaner unless it's Mike Nichols. Because he cleans McDonald's. What's up, Mike? Love Mike Nichols. Uh, so you go into McDonald's and you ask for a manager. Oh, a manager's not in. Okay, can I have a general manager? Um, can I have, you know, anyone who's higher up? Not the cashier. Yeah, don't, I mean, get, talk to a manager. If you can. If you can. If not, then talk to the cashier. Say your spiel. Our spiel is so, so easy. It's like, hey guys, what's going on? I'm Luke. This is Rihanna. We do this whole dance. It's adorable. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's really interesting. Can we can we do it real quick? Yeah, sure. Hey guys, I'm Luke. This is Rihanna. We're with Night Window Cleaning. Do you have a window cleaner? <laughs> it's like something like that. Yeah. No, we really don't. We do don't that. do that. Luke talks. I don't talk to humans. I'm like really awkward. <laughs> but yeah, say your little spiel. Just like a quick one. Yeah. You say your little spiel. Uh, I would try. Um, Always talking to the right person. And when you talk to that person, so even if I go in and there's a cashier there and I get to speak to a GM, I always try to get that DM's number, though. These are for corporate accounts. So even if the GM's like, you know, I think everything sounds pretty good, blah, blah, blah. Okay, no problem. By any chance, though, do you think there's a DM that I could talk to, too? Phone number, email, something. You need the guy that holds the keys to the kingdom. The guy who makes the decisions. Yes. And, and a lot of times for those corporate accounts, it's not even the GM. You need the franchisee. You need the di district manager. So I stress you try, even if you felt like, eh, pretty good about getting that GM and talking to them, st try to push for the DM. Um, the next thing we do, uh, we'll try to give them a quote right there on the spot. So we have a place on the back of our card to do that. And that works really great for mom and pop places. Awesome. I mean, that's usually all they need. We try not to overcomplicate the whole quoting process. These people are running a business. You're coming in. You're soliciting to them. So they don't want a five-page quote, you know, 600 words long, and to take up an hour of their time taking and, photographs. And they, honestly, they don't care how much you charge per pane. They just want to know at yeah. the end, what does that equal? Exactly. What's the total? Yeah. So give them the total. That's what we do. And it's not even like when we're quoting the jobs, we'll go through and say it's 10 panes of glass. Yeah, you can count those 10 panes of glass and say $2 a piece. And that's 20 bucks, but I don't want to make 20 bucks. I want to make $30 on that. I want to yes. make $35 on that. So really it goes into instinct when you're even giving them the price. 
No. Continue. <laughs> um, so for mom and pop, please write that number on the card. Give it to them. Try to make the sell right then and there. Uh, for corporate accounts, and usually right then and there, you're going to get a yes or no. We're coming to the follow-up in just a second. I'm going to come to that. So for corporate accounts, you're going to need to go in, talk to the GM, and you're really probably going to have to escalate that to the DM. Now, with mom and pop places or corporate accounts, there's usually some follow-up involved. Because now, say you go in and there's just the cashier, and that's the highest up they're going to let you talk to. A lot of times they're going to tell you, I don't give out the district manager's number. The general manager's not in. I'm not giving you their phone number. Okay, no problem. Um, thank you very much. Could I just have the card for the store? That's where follow-ups start coming into play. And the follow-up is going to be your best friend in getting storefronts. We get, I would say, 80% of all of our corporate accounts and some of our mom and pops as well comes from follow-ups. Um, next, when it comes to selling the storefronts, I would say the nose. And do you want to start with the nose? Like, you know, you go in, you try to sell it, and they just tell you, no, we're good. What do you do? Uh, come back later. Yes. <laughs> Give them about <laughs> two, three months. Go How right, many jobs do we get doing go right that? Back. Yeah. Uh, we just got one on Friday. Yeah. Just let them say no. Say, okay, see you in a minute. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then come right back. But at the same time, if you hear no and no and no, it can be a little discouraging, I think. So that's yeah. what I experienced when I first started trying to sell. And I think I was sitting in my car and I called you and I was like, I don't want to do this. You, it sucks. you tricked me. <laughs> you tricked <laughs> this me. This isn't easier than cleaning windows. <laughs> and so it can get you down. But I mean, once you get a yes, it's like so it's addictive. Like it, you want more is. and more and more and more. And so when you're starting out brand new, you've got zero storefronts. And, you know, you need to make money. Just keep going out, going out, go to every place. And when you've gone all around, go around again. Keep going around. Don't let them say no. Don't yeah. let them. And if they do, just go back later. Yeah. <laughs> we did that on Friday. We were told no at a, um auto body shop. We were told no about a not, not even a year ago. I think we were told no about six months ago. Uh, I went in and I, you know, did my spiel and gave him my card and everything. And the guy was... A little rude to me and told me, no, we just would not be interested. I was like, oh, okay. And, of course, I asked him if he was the GM, and I swear, this guy told me he was the general manager. When I went back and asked for the general manager, it's a complete different man. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, maybe you're new here. And he was, I don't think I even told you this story. And he was like, no, I've been here 25 years now. And I was like, oh, all right. Well, someone else said that they were the GM. But anyways, I'm Luke, and I'm with Night Window Cleaning. We landed the job. If you guys are, if you guys watch Luke the Window Cleaner, you guys kind of saw, I think it was like last summer, we were kind of doing like a big push for residential. And then we got to a point where we're like, we don't want to do that anymore. And I mean, this season, we just, we didn't want to do it. And I'm not sure that we'll even do it next season, like this coming season, just because we see the value in storefronts. And I think hiring guys, it makes sense for our business to go that route. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to wait on anyone to call us. And that's like the, probably the most important thing to us is just not, we know every week what we're doing. We know every week on Monday we're doing this, Tuesday we're doing this, you know, Wednesday we're doing this. Not that we don't want, want residential because we do. We, yeah. we take that, we're, we do residential as well. It's just like a smaller portion of our company. Um, but yeah. Just like Jersey Josh said, uh, uh, in his opinion, and this is my opinion too, a well-rounded company kind of encompasses a bit of the three. We didn't really touch base on commercial, but our company definitely encompasses storefronts, commercial, and residential work. And it's it's great. We're a well-rounded company. We have um, residual income all year round. We have the peak season, of course, during spring and summer. But I think that this is a solid business plan or business model that we can build off of and scale quite easily. All right. Well, guys, please, if you have any questions about storefronts um, or you want to know anything else, maybe we missed something. We're just sitting here hanging out, chatting. This isn't scripted. Please leave a link below. And you can always message us over on our Facebook at Luke the Window Cleaner. And you can also reach us on Instagram. We love Instagram. We're on Instagram, Luke the I'm Window Cleaner. I'm on Instagram. I shouldn't say Luke's we. not on Instagram. I'm <laughs> on Instagram, Luke the Window Cleaner on Instagram. That's me. Like it. 
I'm there. If you have questions, I answer them. If you comment on my photos, I'm the one who replies to you. Isn't so. Instagram the best? Instagram is 100% me. to be, <laughs> And I am just sick of like pretending to be you. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Facebook is about 50% me. Instagram is a hundred percent. A hundred. I'm not. I'm actually not allowed to touch. No. This. I'm really not allowed to not touch to it. Not to ruin. Not to ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, because sometimes Facebook. I think everyone notices that. Face and everybody knows Facebook can get like a little negative sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Instagram is so positive. And, and if it it's not positive, you just block them. <laughs> yeah, but I mean. It hasn't happened that many times. That's why I like Instagram, and I'm kind of jealous. I'm like, you've got you've got the happy platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really do. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, please be sure to subscribe to this video, and also I to this channel. To this channel. I'm sorry. <laughs> and also, I want to uh, let you know that this video is the chopped down highlights of the whole conversation we just had. The full version of this, of course, is on the podcast and the. Uh, highlighted version is just the YouTube video. I feel like sometimes people miss that. So, all right. Okay, bye. Bye. Yeah.